for hosting us for this moving, wreath-laying ceremony. We are here at Yad Vashem to honor the memory of six million Jews murdered in the Holocaust. Two-thirds of the Jews in Europe were sent to their deaths. Words can never describe the bottomless steps of that evil or the scope of the anguish and destruction. It was history's darkest hour. Millions of innocent, wonderful, and beautiful lives, men, women, and children, were extinguished as part of a systematic attempt to eliminate the Jewish people. 
It was the most savage crime against God and His children. And it is our solemn duty to remember, to mourn, to grieve, and to honor every single life that was so cruelly and viciously taken. As Eli Wiesel said, for the dead and the living, we must bear witness. These words should be carved into the conscience of humanity forever. Only when we remember the families who were torn apart from everyone they loved, who suffered that terrible darkness and evil, who endured the unbearable horror of the Holocaust, only then can we prevent this agony from ever repeating. This place and this entire nation are a testament to the unbreakable spirit of the Jewish people and the hope that light can shine the path beyond the darkness. Through persecution, oppression, death, and destruction, the Jewish people have persevered. They have thrived. They've become so successful in so many places. And they have enlightened the world. The State of Israel is a strong and soaring monument to the solemn pledge. We repeat and affirm, never again. From the depths of the suffering, the Jewish people have built a mighty nation. And the Star of David waves proudly above this cherished land. As long as we refuse to be silent in the face of evil, as long as we refuse to dim the light of truth in the midst of darkness, as long as we refuse to become bystanders to barbarity, then we know that goodness, peace, and justice will ultimately prevail. With sadness for the lives and dreams that were stolen from this earth, with determination to always keep the memories of the victims alive, and with resolve to confront evil wherever it threatens. We ask God to give us the strength, wisdom, and courage to chart the righteous path. Thank you. God bless the memory of the perished. God bless the survivors. God bless the Jewish people, and God bless the State of Israel. Thank you for having me. Thank you. What an incredibly moving speech. that in so few words said so much. Thank you, Mr. President. This adds to a historic visit. You are the first American president who chose to include Israel on his first foreign trip. You are the first president in office to visit the Western Wall. We were so deeply moved to see that picture of you touching the stones of the wall. And may I say, we were deeply moved to see First Lady Melania Trump touching the stone of that wall. And equally moved when we saw your daughter Ivanka and your son-in-law Jared do the same. Now you touch other stones. You honor today the memory of six million Jews who were murdered in the Holocaust. A few weeks ago, you gave a powerful speech in the Holocaust Memorial Day in Washington, D.C. And today, in this solemn place in Yad Vashem, our great monuments of remembrance, we remember the Holocaust. We remember the hatred towards Jews that consumed a defenseless people, we pledge never to be defenseless against that hatred again. 
And to fulfill that pledge, Israel must always be able to defend itself by itself against any threat. I appreciate America's longstanding commitment to that principle. And Mr. President, I appreciate your commitment to that principle, your commitment to the security of the one and only Jewish state, which is entrusted with securing the Jewish future. You said, Mr. President, just now, that we must confront evil in the world. We must confront the barbarians. They are sadly still with us. I want to say something about the bloody horror in Manchester last night. The slaughter of innocents must be unconditionally condemned and unflinchingly confronted, no matter where it occurs. In Manchester, San Bernardino, or Jerusalem, terror is terror is terror. We must all unite to defeat it. Mr. President, today you call the terrorist losers. I know you agree with me that it's our job to make sure that they continue to lose. We will defeat them. Thank you. Thank you to First Lady Melania Trump. Thank you for taking such a strong stand for Israel and the Jewish people. It comes from the heart of all of us. Thank you, Mr. President. In this box, uh, we have a replica that was specifically prepared to you of a young lady, Esther Goldstein. And here is Esther Goldstein. Look at the eyes. But what we have here is uh, her personal album. As she filled and described, this album we have. It's a replica, exact replica of, of the album with all, you know, like kids are doing here, Mr. President, is things like this, you know, don't forget me, Berlin, the child wrote, which means in the midst of the killing and the murder, still hope, still love, and still looking in a positive way towards the world. Uh, and this is the exact replica of uh, uh, Mr. President uh, behind the scenes the story how this album came to us. All the family members, father, mother, her brother were murdered in Auschwitz. And uh, one sister survived. She was sent to Australia as a young girl, and she survived. After the war, cousin of the family came back to Berlin, and a neighbor was good, and he kept some papers of the family throughout the war. And he was ready to give it back to the family. And this is the way that the album came back to the family. And here we have uh, with us uh, the survivor, Margot, sister, that survived and came back to build her 